good morning YouTube and it's a great morning very very pleasant last night we had a little bit of rain that fell early this morning probably around 3 a.m. but it was so little hardly anything at all I've been riding on a daydream today is traveling day and it's a short journey so it'll give me some time to actually go through the RV and do some things that I need to do uh, to make it right uh, basically if you get a chance to where you can clean it up before you move it's probably the best bet because I know once we get back to the house it's hard telling what might happen we might get into some projects or whatever I remember that there was a time uh, not that long ago my grandfather whenever he went on any kind of a trip which he liked to drive my grandmother and him and travel throughout the country just visiting relatives and basically making a commute from Florida up to Ohio to see us and then over to Illinois and he used to get dressed up I mean that used to be a thing whenever you flew on airplanes uh, whenever you got on a train or anything like that um, not so much uh, my parents a generation but my grandparents generation uh, you dressed up you you wore decent clothes now in my case for traveling day I put my travel outfit on which is nothing more than old clothes um, I have this old pullover I wear all the time to work in it's all stained up um, it's made by Centos a uniform company so it's pretty durable and I put on an old pair of jeans that have some permanent stains in them that uh, still look respectable but uh, is definitely nothing new and as far as shoes it's hard telling what I'll be wearing as far as uh, working on stuff but I would think that if you guys are RVers and traveling a lot that's probably the best thing to do is make sure that you have some old clothes that you can put on uh, to travel with your RV and I'll show you one of the reasons why disconnecting all these utilities now you're going to end up getting wet and possibly wet with something you don't want to be wet with and I'm looking at this sewer hose specifically also you're most likely going to be kneeling and you can see there's mud there's leaves um, and it's you know relatively moist here so no sense in having nice clothes on and doing that uh, of course whenever you're screwing around with all this stuff you know taking out your wheel chalks and that bringing up your jacks all that stuff requires you to kneel in different locations so either bring a kneel pad which I have or put on some old clothes and just be careful here's a big culprit here trying to work around this thing now normally if we have this out in the open to where somebody could bump into it we'll put a uh, trash bag over it or a shopping bag so nobody bumps into it because that grease can be pretty brutal and it's the same with handling these you know these ends of these uh, weight distribution bars they're greased up pretty well too so um, both good reasons to have old clothes on then of course getting into the tailgate reaching in you know rubbing yourself against whatever it may be to get things in and out of the back of the truck so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and drain the black tank and the gray tank you guys don't need to see that everybody's done that at some point and it you know pretty straightforward after you've done it a few times uh, go ahead and show you some stuff that I've done in the bathroom that you may or may not do well as you can see I still haven't put much away in here I still got everything kind of laid out but it's getting there um, I've got to make the bed straighten that out and uh, basically want to make a dust cover because as you drive down the road you know there's a lot of uh, shaking that goes on in this RV and you don't want dust to be falling all over the pillows that you sleep in so we kind of have a bed cover that goes over everything and basically it's one of these old blankets um, there's a couple that we sleep with and then all the rest are, are just kind of old uh, we did turn on the small Polonis furnace the little electric furnace that we have um, and it keeps it toasty in here uh, actually too much if you set it too high so uh, it's about 80 in here right now now as far as the bathroom I try to wipe it all down we take out everything wet and put everything away clean up well, you know the mirrors and the sink um, take a washcloth that we may have it you know hanging in here drying and if it's to a state of pretty dry we'll take and, and daub the soap bars uh, to make sure that the soap is dry and then we'll go ahead and pull the 
uh, appliques or whatever you want to call them, uh, the little suction cup non-slippers off. I'll wipe them off, uh, rinse them off, and then go ahead and uh, dry them off and then stick them to the wall here. And then I'll dry out the entire shower, uh, wipe it all down, try to get everything out of there as much as possible. That could cause humidity. Now, it would be easily done if I just open this vent and uh, turn on the fan and let the air circulate. It, it pulls in quite a bit of air. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose all this heat in here quite yet. And as far as this stuff here, um, we'll go ahead and put it in the sink, make sure that it doesn't move around. Uh, this is basically going back into the house. So all this stuff will wipe off real quick and I'm going to be running more water because once I run the black tank uh, and flush it out completely as far as drain it out, then I'll run the gray tank um, and flush behind that like everybody does that's what you should be doing if you didn't know that already and then I'll come back in and I will fill uh, the gray tank maybe a third the way and then I will fill the black tank all the way and flush it one more time so you can see the levels here right now the black we've got it completely full after three days of doing this which we're pretty liberal whenever it comes to the toilet because I'd rather have more water than solids. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Looks like it's not quite full there. And um, our fresh water, of course, we don't have to worry about that. All good. All right, so everything for the most part is put away. Uh, all I got to do is connect the RV to the truck. Um, did a once around of our little site here. Everything's clean. Heidi did good with her cigarette butt. She's very conscious about that. She's always got a little pile somewhere so she knows to throw them away. But as far as inside, I've got some stuff in the back of the truck that can possibly stay there as long as I don't go get anything um, as far as you know tractors or, or wood or anything for any kind of projects. But uh, dirty clothes. Got the grill in here. Uh, of course the grill's all cleaned out we need to really do a good cleaning when we get home and some camera gear and the table is stowed away everything's stowed away here if this falls over no big deal this stuff won't slide away and then uh, most of my gear it's hard telling sometimes I put it back here sometimes I put it in the truck today I just decided to put it back here and looks like that it's going to stay put and then the bathroom uh, you know the fresh water hose sits in there and that's about it pretty straightforward so what we'll do is hook up the truck and head out
one miles an hour, so the GPS says, and it cruises right around 2,400 RPMs at that speed. Now we're going downhill, so this don't really count. Um, I have my foot completely off the throttle, but I am in overdrive, and as far as towing in overdrive, yes and no. If it's in and out of overdrive, you know, third to overdrive, lock up, if you feel it going in and out, uh, definitely you want to take it out of overdrive, but in this case, um, we got a little bit of a hill here, so let's put a little bit to it and see what happens. See, there's a little bit of traffic uh, coming up behind me, but you can kind of see the overall shot. 64 miles an hour, and up a little hill, I'm doing 2100 RPMs. Miles. Take exit 43. Let the, the right. GPS talk to Ohio us here. 14, then take the first right. So we got about another mile. I think I could beat this truck. Let me go ahead and try it. We'll put the wood to it and see what happens here. So overdrive, 75 miles an hour. I'm at 2,500 RPM, or 73 miles an hour, so the GPS says. So not too bad, it's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and get off at this exit. Arriving at home on the left. Well, it's good to be back home or not. <laughs> Look at all the grass. I gotta cut the grass again. So uh, the RV's back in its spot and uh, yeah, it was uneventful. I went ahead and took you guys on the expressway so we could see what the truck does at different speeds um, pulling this thing, which I kind of knew already because we went down to uh, Kentucky, but still wanted to do, uh, or Tennessee, sorry, Tennessee. But we're uh, Still wanted to show you what it was like, so I kind of took the long way home, but it's nice, easy travel, too. Uh, I'm going to see how everything fared inside, because there was some bumpy roads that we uh, came back on. Namely, that road there on the other end. Rut row. So the charcoal grill fell over. Good thing it was empty. I'll go ahead and open this door. Yeah. Whoopsie. That bounced over. Oh, it hooked our lantern when it did that. Hmm. Let's see what else. Uh, well, this looks pretty normal. Yeah, that stuff stayed up there just like I thought. Nothing bounced around in the back, and if it did, it's on a bed. Uh, the TV fell forward. I had this thing sitting this way, and it fell forward. Which, it is kind of tube heavy. Other than that, looks pretty normal. Let's look in here. Ooh, a drawer opened up. How about that? That's different. Oh, we didn't have it latched, probably. And then uh, this stuff here. Yeah. Nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, I even left the shower head up and it stayed up. Usually I lay that down in the tub because I'm afraid of it coming up out of its cradle, but it does have a rubber grip on it. That's one of those oxygenics. Oxygenics, whatever. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like in here. Uh, oh, Heidi's creamer fell on its face. Other than that, the jug of water still in there and her salsa and there was nothing up in there. Well, it fared pretty well, pretty decent. Oh, this came off, but this was sitting way up here like that. So not a big deal there. Look at the lines in my yard. Gosh darn it. I need to do something about that one day where it doesn't make marks in the yard. Mm. I don't know. So I'm going to move my van. <laughs> my van. Eventually it'll probably be my van. I need to move my son's van uh, somewhere out of the way. And, uh, yeah, that might be back over in this area again. I hate to set it over this because I really like to see this dry out. Always, always something to be considerate of whenever you're parked in our driveway. I'm going to put these steps down for Heidi. Occasionally she needs to get up in there. Those are too tall. So yeah, I'll have to uh, pull the plug out 
and uh, drape it up near the front. I've got the RV sitting back a little bit further because my railroad ties have brought it out in a couple spots. Uh, I think ants have gotten into it and eaten it because I always kill ants here. So it's a little bit further back. Um, but still get the, the job done. The cord's long enough. I have enough cord that we'll be able to tuck it up and away. I do have the camper relatively level from what I can tell. We'll go ahead and turn off the electric jack. Look at the mess in the garage. Oh. Yeah, whenever you got stuff <laughs> laying around, it makes you think about all the stuff you got. And I mean, all I'm doing is organizing, cleaning up, and trying to get rid of it. But when you come back to all this stuff after living in, you know, something that was so minimal and you were getting by just fine, it makes you uh, realize how much burden the stuff really is. Again, I know I'm preaching to the choir to half you guys, so just ignore that little rant. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Um, not much going on today. Heidi and I was going to do some sort of an update, but we really don't have any material we wanted to cover uh, except for future plans, and that, you know, we're not solid on, so there's no sense in even mentioning them. But we will let you know whenever something... Uh, Oh, what do you want? It develops. That's the word. When a new story develops, we'll let you know. And, of course, we'll bring you along anything that we uh, do and decide we want to do. And, as always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.